Hiya. Welcome to today's edition of Caddy's Corner. This should be the 49th video. I'll have to go back and count them. I'm not sure if I started it correctly to be 50 tomorrow or 49 tomorrow. I don't know. I'll just keep making them. How's that sound? Um, I've come back to the corner that I was in. I had a very busy day today. Um, tomorrow's my birthday. The last post in my 40s. So this is what we're going to... That's Phil walking on a bag. Or, is that what you're going to do? Okay. Anyway, I'm going to do, introduce you to this guy. He's Grover. I bought him when my cousins came in town this summer, and we went to Coney Island. Um, he was important to me in my young life. So when I was about probably two, um, I would make my mom read me The Monster at the End of the Book. It was one of those little golden touch books. And I couldn't read, obviously. But I memorized. It was my first script. I would sit in her lap, and if she turned the page ahead of me saying all the words or got behind, I'm like, bah, 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 bah. Um, And the whole point is Grover, him, uh, the very beginning, he's like, I'm going to be your host for this book. And wait, what was the title? Monster at the end of the book. Oh, my God, there's a monster. Please don't turn the page. And you just keep turning pages, and he keeps freaking out, tries to tie him up with rope. Then we turn the page, there's a bunch of torn rope. And puts up boards. You turn the page, and there's boards and rope. Then he puts bricks up. It's like the three little pigs. He's figuring it out. And then when you turn the page, there's this mess of bricks and ropes and boards. And he's like, please, 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 don't turn the page. It's the last page of the book, and I'm scared. It's a monster at the end of this book. And he turned to the last page, and there's him, with a little baby thought bubble going, it was me. Sometimes you are the monster at the end of the book in your own story. Um, the what's been happening to you, what's been done to you. It's not that it's your fault. It's not a fault. But there's something inside of you that you can crack open, change, learn from, adapt in order to be different so that the same thing won't happen again. Or if it does, you'll handle it differently. I am in the process of learning about a lot of those. So, today, after I ran around, did what I had to do, got some dinner, had to go get Phil some cat food. That's why the grocery bag was on the bed. I stopped at the deli, and I wanted some ice cream. And I usually get haagen -Dazs. They've come out with these uh, boozy versions, some like bourbon and Baileys, and those are really yummy, so I thought I'll grab that particular deli I stopped at after dinner. Didn't have um, any haagen -Dazs. So, I... Got something I thought I would never eat again. Um, I'm gonna show it to you now. So it's this Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia. Now, back in college, there's this wonderful woman uh, who became a dear, dear friend of mine, um, Catherine Fraser Miller Dunnett, i.e., Lady Kate. She was British and very sassy, and we hated her when we first met her and made a lot of fun of her, but then we became best friends, and we ended up living together after college. Um, our friend Patrick Michael uh, produced a show, and Dexter Ramey, um, they co-produced a show called The Last Viking, and we did it out at a, um, I forget the name, Shirley Plantation, an old plantation. They had some extra land right on the James River, and we built the set ourselves. Complicated story, but I lived with Kate that year. My parents had moved to Atlanta, Georgia. I had uh, committed to doing the show. I went to uh, fight school and uh, won Best Partner with Marty Noise um, in Las Vegas uh, for uh, Society of American Fight Directors, becoming an actor combatant um, in a three-week program out there. And then I was going to move to New York. I lived with Kathy Tolsky and out in Long Island, and my life went from there. But Lady Kate passed away in 2001, in July. And um, I kept thinking in her honor one day I would grab another friend who meant as much to me as she did, and I would sit and eat Cherry Garcia, no bowl, just two spoons, in front of a TV, on the floor, because that's what Kate and I did when life was hard. We ate Cherry Garcia, we sat on the floor, and we talked it out. And she believed in me a lot. She always said, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. And I believe that about her, but we both didn't believe it about ourselves sometimes. So, lately, um, 
been trying to reconcile a lot of grief. Uh, I've talked about how hard the last year was with uh, my dad and then Adam passing away. Um, Kate was the very first peer friend that I lost. And it was, uh, she was killed on Martha's Vineyard in a head-on collision. She was on a moped and a car hit her head-on. Um, just about one year after she had gotten married. So we had the funeral in the same church with the same bagpipe player and it was brutal, brutal. And I know that in the grief of the process of grief, um, there are some things that we hold on to so tight that if anyone attempts to touch them or taint them or m show us any sort of other reality of light, we hold on super tight and we're like, no, this is it, this is mine, this is mine you couldn't understand. I do that a little bit. I have a few things that I do that with with her and with other people that have passed in my life, whether they are physically dead or not. Then there's other things that we push away. We're like, I can't, I can't do that again. I can't be there again. I can't listen to this song again because of my wedding. I can't eat this food because it's what I shared with this person. And earlier today, I was thinking about love and how much suffering I've paid for in my life um, when love breaks down or love turns to hate. Uh, especially when you don't see it coming. Ooh, buddy. When you think, I have respect and love for this person. They must have respect and love for me too. And then, no, 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 no. You were really wrong. Again. If they do love you, it's a twisted, broken kind of love that doesn't feel like love to you. So anyway. I am um, thought about having the spoon here with me and opening the container and eating it on camera, but sorry y'all, that's for me and Kate to do alone. Um, I haven't had it since she died. Um, sometimes it's made me cry in grocery stores. And there's a letter I wrote to myself hanging on my calendar. I did this last year, I'm a kind of lark and I've decided I'm gonna do it every year over the summer. Um, writing a letter to myself for my birthday. And last year, I wrote it before Adam had taken his own life. And I read it after he did. And there was some stuff about him in it. And how awesome he was to me. And how much I loved him. And I don't know what the letter this year has. But I guarantee you, it's uh, from a place, a very, very different place than I am these days. So, I'm tired. I'm very tired. That's why my energy is low and a little off. I'm going to go to bed very early tonight, probably just after I post this and eat some ice cream. And I'll do my birthday post tomorrow. And I want to thank everybody who's reaching out. I may not get back as fast as I wish I could to everyone. A lot going on. Working tomorrow. 7 o'clock tap in. 9.30ish karaoke starts at Montero's. That's where I will be. And then Saturday I'm doing my own thing in the city. So anyway. It's cold and windy, and it was a crazy sunset happening through a lot of clouds. So my hope for today is that you find ways to remember your favorite stories. Celebrate the people that you love that are lost. Whether they're still on this earth or not. Or they're still lost. I'm trying to find my way. I've had some good guides along the way. Uh, apparently Mr. Phil would like to be acknowledged again by eating a box. So <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining me in Caddyland. We'll do it again tomorrow and, uh, love ya. Bye.